I'm Brian Palmer, Architectural Controls and Networking Product Manager at ETC. During this short video, I'm going to take you through the features and functionality of the Paradigm Local Access Web Interface. This web interface can be accessed using any standard internet-capable browser on a PC or Macintosh computer. It's not dependent on any specialty configuration software uh, and is accessed simply by logging into the Paradigm processor. Now let's take a brief look at the Paradigm web interface, uh, how you connect to it, and what functions are available to you from within that web interface. So to connect to the web interface, it's pretty simple. Open uh, any internet-capable browser, whichever one you may use as normal. And right up here in the address bar, all you need to do is type in the IP address of one of the processors that's in your system. Press Enter, and it'll load the web interface for you. Now this is broken up in a very simple way. Over here on the left side, you get six different main functions, and some of these offer different sets of features for you as well. Looking at the system tab here, you can see some basic information about your uh, control system, including the IP address of the processor that you just typed in, what the current time that's running. That's important for your timed event schedules, as this is the time that it, the processor is going to use for running its timed event schedule. You can also see how long it's been running, what type of rack enclosure it's in, some very simple information about your project listed here. This is all entered by the technician at the time of commissioning. So we can put any information in here that you may want to have available. Uh, for example, project notes may list a primary contact number for support or, or whatever you may need for your facility. The local station section here then lists all the stations that are expected within the configuration and their online or offline status. Now you can see here mine all show is offline because the processor I'm connected to doesn't have any stations connected to it right now. Um, moving into the control tab then, this is where you can really interact with your system and, and set levels and recall presets and things like that. So broken down into a couple different uh, main components here then. Presets tabs, which you get by default, and here I can activate or deactivate any of the presets in my system. These are sorted by the space in which the presets contained in. Global will affect the entire configuration. Uh, lobby, for example, these would just affect my lobby space. This is all on how the configuration is built, but it gives you some representation of where these presets will affect from within this web interface. Now, in addition to activate and deactivate, I can also record if I have levels set. Um, for channels that are included in these presets already, by pressing record, I now take a snapshot of the system, record those levels into that preset, so I can update the looks of my preset. Right here in the web interface, I don't need a touch screen or any configuration software to do that at all. I also have the same type of functions for any sequences that may exist, um, so I can start, stop, pause, or resume my sequences, open and close any walls that are for my partitionable spaces from within this interface. I can even set specific levels for a zone. Uh, and that's by clicking edit, typing in a level, I click confirm. Now it takes that new level into the system and my dimmer racks or whatever I'm uh, outputting my levels from are controlled by, by this interface. Now this is very handy for updating my presets. I can sit in a room with my laptop connected back to my paradigm control system, set the levels for the look I want, come back over here to my preset tab, record that preset um, using the levels that I've just set. Now after the channels then, we have tabs for override and macros. This allows me to activate or deactivate any overrides I have in my system uh, for, for discontinuing the use of a timed event for a specific period of time would be an example of where you'd use an override. And then a macro allows us to recall a set of controls, all configured by the technician at the time of commissioning. And then, of course, this gives the end user a way here to come in and, and activate these controls very, very easily. Moving down my different screens then, timed events is a screen uh, here that a lot of people use the web interface for. This gives a very easy way to update your timed event schedules. So I can come in here and edit one of the timed events or delete a timed event if I need to. Uh, for reoccurring events, I also get an option to delete just that one occurrence if I don't want it to, to play that specific day. Um, this is very useful as facility gets go up and running, you know, you may want to change your schedule so that it accommodates the new time structure that you're using for the times that you're open or closed, things like that. I can just come in here and edit these timed events very easily. See, by clicking edit, it takes me into an interface. I can change the start and end time. I can change what that exact timed event does, what its reoccurrence is, uh, and maybe I need to have an event in here that I need to end after a certain amount of time. I only want it to run for two more weeks and then I don't want to use that anymore. I can change my reoccurrence for that. And if I had overrides in my system, I could associate what overrides can override this timed event. 
In addition to this specific screen that's calendar based where I can click through the different days to see my list of events, I can also come into summary. Now just get a list of all of the reoccurring events in my system so that I have an idea what's going to run every day within my system. Um, you can see I can go to today if I just want to see today. I can even create a brand new event from this interface. Works in the same way that the edit events interface works, but just allows me to create one that hasn't existed previously. So very flexible interface and really one of the reasons people commonly use the, the local access web interface. The network tab gives me um, basic network based information for the configuration and IP structure for my processor here. And then any other online processors. One key thing to note here is it tells me if that processor exists within the project I'm logged into. In this particular case, I have another processor online, but it's not part of the same project, so it tells me that. But I do have a link where I can go to that processor. Maybe I've logged into a different processor than I meant to. I have multiple systems on my network, and I can now switch between them. If I had other processors online that were part of the same project, I could click on them, get into the web interface for those projects as well, and that's useful for back on the system tab, seeing what stations that are connected to that processor are online, uh, as well as seeing what control channels and what levels they're at. Uh, however, if changing a timed event, if that exists across multiple processors, that'll update the entire system uh, with the relevant data as we go. In this log screen then, this is really troubleshooting information. If you're having an issue with your system and you call the ETC service number, uh, they may ask you to check this log uh, or retrieve the log, which can also be done right at the processor if you don't want to log in through the web interface. We get those log files and we can look and see exactly what's happened in the system in what order and help determine why the lights may have turned off at a specific time. Perhaps somebody pressed a button that wasn't expected, or maybe there is a configuration uh, parameter that tells it at this time turn the lights off that nobody knew about. It gives us a way to just help you figure out what's happening with your system very easily. Uh, the last button here then, configure, this allows me to set date and time information for my processor. As I mentioned in the beginning, this is important so that the processor knows when to run the timed events that you had. It needs this reference information. You shouldn't need to change this, but for some reason it's not set properly. You can come in here, change this information, no configuration software needed. So one of the big points I mentioned with the web interface for people is you get all of these functions with the paradigm control system. No, no extra charge, they're included with every processor, and no specialty configuration required at all. Just your standard internet browser and a computer that can connect to your, your lighting system. You can update all your timed events, preset information, and, and all the basic functions of your system without using that complex configuration software very easily. So that's the Paradigm Local Access web interface. Uh, hopefully you'll, you'll all find uses for it in your facilities.